Raging bushfires in Australia have claimed two more lives today. So that brings the number of deaths linked to the fires to 12. Police have warned that all telecommunications along New South Wales' south coast will be lost tonight. Over in the state of Victoria, some 4,000 tourists and residents fled to the beaches of Malakuta to seek refuge from the blazes. Terrified crowds hunkered down in boats and public buildings. Now, for more analysis on Australia's bushfire crisis, let's cross over to Andrew Gissing, an expert with the Bushfire and Natural Hazards Cooperative Research Centre. Andrew is also General Manager with Risk Frontiers. Andrew, thanks for joining us this hour. Well, we know that bushfires, they're quite common in Australia, but the question is, how did we get here? And, you know, and is this actually the worst, though? Yeah, good evening. Um, yeah, to, to really talk about the evolution of this fire season, well, fire season started back in September, earlier than uh, than usual in uh, in New South Wales. So we had properties lost in Queensland, then through northern New South Wales, and this fire season's really been tracking down uh, the New South Wales coast now into Victoria, and even today. We saw some bushfires in uh, in Tasmania also, and we've seen some severe bushfires and some houses lost in South Australia in the last uh, week as well. Um, is it the worst uh, fire season on record? No, it's not. If we think back, uh, especially back to our 2009 Black Saturday bushfires where we lost 173 lives, over 2,000 uh, homes were destroyed, uh, this, uh, this fire season still has a way to go. But... Uh, Certainly uh, in New South Wales and in Queensland uh, this year, it's uh, been phenomenal uh, and, uh, and um, unprecedented. Andrew, so not the worst fire season that we've seen on record, but it has been pretty severe from what we have seen. Why has evacuation not been made mandatory? Well, it, uh, the, the legislation varies in, in different states. So, for example, in... Uh, in New South Wales, you can actually call for uh, forced evacuations. However, it's very difficult to do so, uh, especially when we're looking at so many uh, individuals that need to evacuate. Uh, th there's certainly encouragement, especially on the, these really severe fire days, for people to be leaving early, especially early in, in the morning or the night before these severe fire days, because leaving early and evacuating is, is the safest thing to do. Uh, it, it, as I said, uh, legislation varies, and uh, in Victoria, for example, uh, you don't have the same provisions for evacuation also as what you do in the state of New South Wales. But Andrew, looking to contain the fire, you know, are there lessons to be learned from California? So basically allowing small fires to burn and then clear dry bush so that fires don't spread and actually get larger? Well, there will always be lessons to be learned, and there will be lessons to be learned uh, out, out of these uh, events that are occurring here in Australia. On, on the, the nature of fuel management, uh, you know, Australian fire authorities and land managers, they do conduct uh, what, what, what I call planned burning, and that, that, that is, in essence, is about reducing the fuel loads which are available for, for bushfires. There's obviously going to be debates, uh, you know, from various sides of opinions, just how effective those uh, strategies are and whether or not there needs to be more or less planned burning uh, into the future. And those debates will no doubt occur after these, uh, these fires have, uh, have, have finished. Uh, Andrew, the firefighting force that are on the ground to, to sort of tackle this, the Prime Minister has said that it's going to remain largely voluntary. Why isn't more being devoted, more resources being devoted to firefighting? Well, the majority of house losses in Australia uh, from bushfires have only occurred in, uh, you know, a very small number of bushfires going back, you know, over the last century. Uh, and these bushfires that claim so many uh, homes uh, on, on these bad fire days, they're extremely difficult to, to put out. So even if you had a lot of firefighters and a lot of equipment to put out these fires, uh, it would be tremendously hard and, and not necessarily an effective or efficient uh, use of money. One thing that I would call for, though, in terms of future investment tackling bushfires in Australia is investment in future technologies and innovation in particular, and innovation which looks at rapid detection of, of bushfires and uh, then looking at how you can move resources rapidly across uh, fire grounds to make sure that you can put those fires out as quickly as you possibly can. Andrew, thank you very much for your perspective this evening on Australia's bushfires and the state of play that we're seeing. That was uh, Andrew Gissing there speaking to us from Melbourne.